The John Eagle family of dealerships is proud to sponsor School Zone Dallas, a showcase of DISD's successful commitment to prepare all students to graduate with the knowledge and skills to become productive and responsible citizens. Hi, I'm Flaviano, a senior at WT Ward High School in the Dallas Independent School District. And I'm Naisha, a junior right here at Booger T. Washington High School for the Performing and Visual Arts, the award-winning Arts Magnet High School for Dallas ISD. Throughout the show, we'll be taking you inside Booger T.'s newly renovated home, a 190,000 square foot facility made possible through a unique private-public partnership that combined resources from the district and donations from the community to make this state-of-the-art learning space happen. We'll hear from famous Booker T grads such as Nora Jones and Edie Brickell, as well as bring you many more exciting and interesting stories from throughout the Dallas Independent School District. Right here on School Zone Dallas. Welcome to Booker T. Washington High School for the Performing and Visual Arts. Located deep in the heart of Dallas's Arts District, the school's proximity to venues such as the Dallas Museum of Art and Morden H. Myerson Symphony Center provides students with the invaluable opportunity to attend workshops and field trips nearby, as well as showcase their own performances. And there's no shortage of talent here. In addition to academics, students can choose from a variety of disciplines, including music, dance, visual art, and theater. The school has received multiple awards and honors, including being named a National Blue Ribbon School and a Gold Grammy Signature School. And just last month, Booker T was named one of the most successful magnets in the nation by the U.S. Department of Education, an incredible honor. Let's get started with our first story. The presidential election took place this past November, but not without Dallas ISD students weighing in. It was an opportunity to learn hands-on about our government in the electoral process. Here's Stephanie to tell us all about it. Thanks, guys. Yesterday, our country made history by inaugurating our first African-American president, Barack Obama. The inauguration was the climax of an election cycle that started over two years ago. The election process gives citizens of the United States an opportunity to be directly involved in deciding the future of our nation. The students of the Dallas ISD were also very involved in this election. Every school in the district participated in the 2008 Dallas ISD mock election. And like the national election, it started with mock conventions, complete with signs, silly hats, songs, and speeches. With profound gratitude and great humility, I accept your nomination for presidency of the United States. The choice is between right change or wrong change. <laughs> and my wife, after 25 years, who still leaves me both speechless and breathless at the same time. And what political convention would be complete? Without and protesters. Hey, hey, let me go! Let me go! And this war! And this war! Mock election was designed so that students, grades K through 12, can, can participate in the voting process. Students will learn about the major candidates, the parties, the platforms, the different issues they support, what they're opposed to, and they can make an informed decision based upon the activities, the lessons they've already gone through. Election day for the Dallas ISD was October 30th, and every student in the district was encouraged to make their voice heard by casting a ballot for their preferred candidate. I voted for Barack Obama. Senator John McCain. 
Um, I'm gonna vote for Obama because I think he really is gonna change this world. I think he's gonna do something different. I voted for John McCain. I already voted and I voted for Barack Obama and because I agree with a lot of things he agrees with. For the first time, results were updated live on the district's website so interested voters could stay up to date on the very latest voter tallies. After all the ballots were cast and counted, it was clearly a landslide. The students of the Dallas ISD elected Senator Barack Obama with 67,707 votes, beating out Senator John McCain who received 11,143 votes. It was a long process and a lot of people worked very hard to make sure that the Dallas ISD mock elections were fair and accurate. And now, they better get some rest because it all happens again in four short years. For School Zone Dallas, I'm Stephanie. Take a look at this 400 seat, 16,000 square foot arts theater, utilized by students and teachers for both performances and instruction. Throughout the school year, students from the school's four clusters bring all this space to life with their creativity. Next up on School Zone Dallas, we'll take a look at a special program that funnels community support to Dallas ISD students and provides them with vision benefits that help make everything look a little clearer. Here's Lorena with the story. Thanks guys. Recently, hundreds of Dallas ISD elementary students began to see life in a whole new way. Thanks to a new pilot program designed to help students and families who couldn't afford vision care. I understand our students are getting fitted for eyeglasses today and their frames and we certainly appreciate the opportunity to have our students with their glasses so they can see better. Uh, as we all know, uh, our students can't learn if they're not able to see as well. So we want to have the opportunity for the kids to be able to see. According to the National PTA, more than 10 million students suffer from vision problems, which may cause them to fail in school. That's one of the reasons the Kids Vision for Life Dallas Coalition was created. The SLA Vision Foundation and the Lions Sight and Tissue Foundation teamed up with the Dallas ISD to provide free eye exams and glasses to elementary students who qualify for the program. When my parents saw me with my glasses, they got really excited. The SLA Vision Foundation was really a, a consideration 10 years ago for SLA of America. The idea was to be able to provide better sight through better life. The school nurse on site on the campus was notified that the SLR Lions Club Vision Van would be on their campus at a certain time and that they were to make appointments with children who have a need for eye exams and glasses so that we can do between 30 and 70 students a day to uh, get an eye exam and they get a complete eye exam. They get full service eye exam and uh, modern up-to-date eyeglass frames. My friends say that my new glasses look cool and that they sh I should put a design on them. Since the students uh, receive their glasses, I can already see excitement in their faces because they're now able, they're not struggling to read and the process of getting these glasses so quickly was fantastic. Um, when we called the students down to come and get their glasses, they were so excited that, oh my God, we can actually now read the printed page. And, and uh, I think they're going to be very, very successful. Statistics tell us that even though the school nurses are identifying children that have visual needs, only 50% of those children's parents are actually acting on getting a pair of glasses or taking that next step to get him to an optometrist to have that exam done. That's what we're trying to assist the school nurses with and from our position we are so grateful and so appreciative to the Dallas Independent School District and all the nursing staff for the support they're giving us and the contribution they're making to helping the children see better. I think we all sometimes take our vision for granted and it's nice to know these kids can now focus on their work with less difficulty. We'd like to thank the Essler Vision Foundation, the Lion's Sight and Tissue Foundation, and all the countless volunteers for their outstanding work. I know the parents, students, and staff of Dallas ISD really appreciate it. For School Zone Dallas, I'm Lorena. You're watching School Zone Dallas, and we're both students in the Dallas Independent School District. This past year, we're proud to report that tax scores throughout the district reached an all-time high. With the exception of 7th grade writing, progress has been made in every grade and every subject. 
In addition, this year, 26 Dallas ISD schools have been named exemplary, and 77 recognized by the Texas Education Agency, a record high 103 schools. Also recently, Dallas voters approved a new Dallas ISD bond program that will help allocate money for 15 new schools, in addition to providing renovations and technology upgrades to campuses throughout the district. Just last month, the final school built by the 2002 bond program was dedicated, Francisco F. Pancho Medrano Middle School. The school stands out in Dallas ISD as being the first in the district to use a geothermal heat pump system for its heating and cooling. Overall, the system will save more than 30% on energy costs. Another step taken by Dallas ISD to go green. For our next story, we're going to accompany district students on an incredible learning experience where they studied aspects of Native American culture and met some individuals that played an important role in modern history. Here's Olivia to fill us in. Did you know that Texas is the fifth largest American Indian population? It's true. There are over 660 American Indian students and over 60 tribal nations throughout Dallas ISD. We're Cherokee. We're Comanche and Kiowa. We're Choctaw. Federally funded and located in the Nolan Estes Plaza, the American Indian Education Program provides services to support the future of American Indian students within Dallas ISD. When an American Indian student enrolls in a Dallas ISD school, a representative from the American Indian Education Program connects with them and their parents. With the idea of getting students to think about going to college or into the workforce, the American Indian Education Program arranges field trips to local universities and community colleges for middle and high school students. We want to give them a better chance to you know, further their education. We, we try to instill in them to go further than what high school especially, and then go on to college, get a trade or get a degree of some sort. The cultural center displays several artifacts from various tribes, such as the Hopi, Zuni, and Alaska Natives. This colorful center is available as a resource to any Dallas ISD teachers and the community. Children's books written by American Indian authors from across the United States decorate the center. These same books are used by the American Indian book clubs that are in several Dallas ISD schools. Visiting these schools on a bi-weekly basis, Leo Wesley reads and discusses the books with the book club members. The book brings an important moral message while teaching students about American Indian culture. At the end of the meetings, the books are provided free of charge to the book club members. This past fall, the Frontiers of Flight Museum exhibited Native Words, Native Warriors. At a special gathering at the museum, Griner and Quintanilla Middle School students were able to meet and speak with three original Navajo code talkers. Their primary job was to talk and transmit information on tactics, troop movements, orders, and other vital battlefield information via telegraphs and radios in their native dialect. A major advantage of the code talker system was its speed. The method of using Morse code often took hours, whereas the Navajos handled a message in minutes. They've been credited with saving countless lives and hastening the end of the war. I want to encourage them to learn their language, their native language, their native culture, and uh, their tradition, and uh, listen to their parents. They are the best teachers in the world that they'll ever have. We must not look backward in anger, but forward with definite goals in mind. Robert L. Bennett from the Oneida Tribe. By educating American Indian students, the American Indian Education Program is improving academic performance in reading, increasing college enrollment, and participation in cultural activities. For Schools on Dallas, I'm Olivia. Right now, we're in the art gallery at Booker T. Washington High School. Here, visual arts students display some of their finished products. After studying a curriculum that includes photography, painting, printmaking, and sculpture, Visual arts is just one field of the performing arts students here can choose to study. There is also a strong focus on academics. Twenty advanced placement courses are offered at the school, with the AP Music Theory course recognized by the College Board as being the strongest such course in the world. For our next story on School Zone Dallas, we'll check out Mini Melodies, Dallas ISD students composing an original song to encourage students to eat healthy in the lunchroom. Here, again, is Stephanie with all the details. Ever had a song that you just can't get out of your head? You know, that catchy tune you can't seem to forget? 
Well, that's the result of effective marketing. And back in the fall, Food and Child Nutrition Services decided to do a little jingle marketing of their own. So they invited students to submit their own original jingle in the Menu Melodies Contest. The winning jingle needed to demonstrate creativity, crowd appeal, musical quality, and ability to promote a positive message about school meals within a 15 to 30 second time frame. We noticed how jingles seem to be very popular right now and a catchy marketing tool. So we wanted a way to be able to tie that into something that the kids would enjoy doing and learn from at the same time. More than 100 students from across the district submitted jingles from all types of genres, from beatbox to blues to hip hop to rap, you name it. Judges listened to each entry and rated them according to categories. The tough part was judging all the entries and narrowing them down to just 12 finalists. The selected jingles were posted online for all students to log on and cast their votes. More than 7,300 students voted for their favorite tune. W.E. Griner Exploratory Arts Academy won first place with their jingle, The Lunch Line. The winning melody brought in more than 2,300 votes. Now it's fourth period, I My role was to write the lyrics and um, kind of sing back up with the other people so we can harmonize together. My role was backup singer and it was very fun working with my friends. It was surprising to hear it online because I didn't really think I was going to be there. My role was basically to work on the computer and edit everything. I had a lot of fun because I got to work with my friends and composing and singing the jingle. Each first place winner received an iPod shuffle and an iTunes gift card. Also, the second place winners were students from C.P. Russell Elementary with their jingle, Hit the Cafeteria. And the third place winners were students from Sequoia Elementary with School's Kitchen Ticking. In the school kitchen, it's definitely finger licking, which keeps the school ticking. Congratulations to all the winners, and thanks to Food and Child Nutrition Services and such talented students, we'll be humming all the way to the cafeteria. For School Zone Dallas, I'm Stephanie. I think that if you're an artist, you're an actor, you're a dancer, you're a musician here, if you work for it, if you put it out there, um, the people here and the space here now will do everything they can to nurture that talent in you. That's the difference. Um, I, I think that other schools can do as much as they can, but that's not really where their base is. That's not really where their concentration is. And that's what it is here. And it's a gift. Without a doubt, graduates from Booker T go on to do some very impressive things. 99% of students here graduate, earning annually more than $8 million in scholarships. Booker T alumni have collectively won 24 Grammy Awards. And with former students like Erica Badu, Nora Jones, and Roy Hargrove, it's not hard to see why. This past summer, former students returned to the school for a special concert to mark the facility's grand reopening. My wife. Edie Brickell, lead singer for the New Bohemians, even sang a song devoted entirely to her former school. For our next story on School Zone Dallas, we're going to meet up with the marching band at W.H. Adamson High School as they prepared to compete in the state's UIL competition. The hard work and dedication of the band members and director is something to behold. And here's Laura to tell us all about it. Hi, I'm Laura, here at my home school, W.H. Adamson High School, where I'm about to introduce you to an impressive group of people, one I'm proud to play a part in, the Leopard Marching Band. Band on three, band on three, one, two, three, band! For somebody that hasn't seen the band at W.H. Adamson, they would see a group of individuals that are highly dedicated and very into what they're doing. They would see motivated students and students that are trying to become better musically and mentally and educationally. It has quality that no other program has. And it has quality because the people that are in it, the people that practice, the people that take it seriously, the people that just do what they have to do in order for us to be a number one band, which is dedication, determination, discipline. And that's the most, the three things that we rely on. 
We're all about precision and we practice to be the best. Just all about executing a perfect routine and we just have fun. Although its numbers are growing, the band is still a relatively small group of students. They've nicknamed themselves the Snack Pack, overcoming their lack of size with hard work and lots of discipline. We are the Snack Pack. We are a small group, but we have grown and doubled our numbers and now have tripled them since the time that I've been here. It's not all about quantity, it's about quality, and that's what our teacher teaches us. And I really respect that because it is true. When I joined the band, we put our bass drums in uh, chairs, and we used to play with tennis balls as mallets for the bass drums. And, you know, we didn't stop just because of our equipment or of our low fundings. We kept going with what we have. We worked with what we have, and that got us so far. And now we're, you know, we're getting new instruments, we're getting new drums, we're getting new un uniforms, and it's all because of our hard work. Uh, within our school, you know, the band program is definitely one of the more core type things that are that goes on around here. You know, at most schools you go, you go to, and you hear a lot about the football team. Well, here it's, you hear a lot about the band program, and um, it's something that definitely a lot of people want to be a part of. So we're becoming a great program, and through that, our accomplishments were: we got a one on UIL concert, and we got a two on UIL marching. The next band in Conference 4A is the W.H. Adamson High School Band from Dallas, Texas. Band, I think, it has helped me grow as a person. I never knew that I could lead a whole group of people by myself. I didn't know I had those qualities. So band has opened up new, new windows for me. I do believe that we have a great program. And to see something grow that much over these four years, it's amazing. It's, it's just a wild journey and a wild ride, and I'm gonna miss it when I graduate. All told, the Leopard Band scored a three this year at UIL and is currently getting ready for holiday concerts and future competitions. No doubt, the best is yet to come. For School Zone Dallas, I'm Laura. In addition to visual arts, students here at Booker T also have the opportunity to study music, which includes piano, jazz ensemble, music theory, and orchestra. The students in this department have been awarded 194 DB awards from Downbeat Magazine, as well as having instructor Bart Morans on the December cover of Jazz Ed. Or students can focus on theater studies, including acting, directing, playwriting, or costume design. Plays completely written, directed, and acted by students often toward the community. Finally, students like myself can choose dance, studying everything from folklorical to modern dance techniques to African dance and tap. Students from this department have gone on to receive scholarships at prestigious schools such as the School of American Ballet and Juilliard. This new dance studio is one of many much used new features of this renovated facility. A $55 million expansion made possible through a public-private partnership thanks to the hard work of the Booker T. Washington High School for the Performing and Visual Arts Advisory Board, including a $10 million donation from Nancy Hammond, construction on this updated building was made possible. For our final story on School Zone Dallas, let's head out to W.W. Samuel High School, where we'll see how, just like here at Booker T, donations and support from the community can make a big impact on the lives of students. Hi, I'm Bryce. Here at the Building Trades classroom of W.W. Samuel High School, where students learn woodworking, carpentry, and construction skills. It's a difficult task to walk through here and not get your hands dirty. Building Trades here at Samuel deals with 9th to 12th grade students. What we hope to accomplish is to lead them on into a career into the Building Trades. Now, one of the great things that that the Building Trades class offers for the students is a curriculum that enables the students to get all of what, what is hands-on in terms of woodworking and working with different types of products to build different types of products. They build anything from uh, tree houses to for Christmas. They One of the projects was to build Christmas trees. So uh, all of the tools that are used uh, in the Building Trades uh, classroom environment really give the students a hands-on opportunity to learn the craft that's provided within the, the context of the curriculum for building trades. It's a comprehensive curriculum here at Samuel, one that just last year was greatly enhanced by a generous donation from a local family. My dad was a very happy person who enjoyed life and 
his true love was working in his shop. It was always his wish that the equipment go to someone who could use and benefit from it and particularly wanted it to go uh, to a school. I kind of compared from going to a, from going from a Yugo to a Mercedes. We moved into the, the current century in terms of equipment. Uh, a lot of the equipment that we had at that point was some of the equipments from when the school was originally built. And so it was not the most up-to-date equipment. Uh, with, the, with the number of safety features that were built into the equipment, it made uh, for a much better work environment and certainly a safer working environment for our students. It, it's, it's moved us uh, leaps and bounds forward in what we're able to do here in the uh, trades construction classes. The family is, is quite phenomenal. We were, we were fortunate enough to have them come out and uh, actually see the equipment and uh, they, were, they were happy to see it being used uh, in, in the manner that it's being used. I got to meet them one-on-one -on -one and it, it gave me a great deal of pleasure to tell them exactly what this meant. And I think the focus was that the equipment was being used every day, constantly, and was not being ignored, it was not just sitting here. I think, and I saw, a few tears in their eyes as they realize that the legacy of their father and grandfather continues on every day here at Samuel through the use of all of this equipment. Samuel High School is uh, an inner city school and we are thankful to family members like the Umberg family who step back into the community and say that they can give back to the community and they give back to the students. The students are our future. And the more we invest in our students, uh, the more success we'll see in the future from our students' behalf. Thanks to the generosity of the Bromberg family, Samuel students will continue to honor his memory and further their studies for many more years to come. For School Zone Dallas, I'm Bryce. Well, that just about wraps it up for this edition of School Zone Dallas. We'd like to thank John Eagle and the John Eagle family of car dealerships. Without whose support, today's show would not have been possible. Thank you so much, Mr. Eagle. And thank you for watching. We leave you today with a special look at the Talented Bell Choir from Jimmy Tyler Brashear Elementary. Until next time, we'll see you back here in the, the Zone. Hi, I'm Desmond, here at Jimmy Tyler Brashear Elementary School, where inside students are ready to impress. It's the Brashear Bell Choir. The Bell Choir here at Brashear Elementary is a choir that consists of pre-kindergarten students who are ages four. The children that are in the Bell Choir, they have lots of fun. They like performing for their parents, they like performing for their school, and they just enjoy being on stage so that others can see them performing. A lot of their parents, their family members come. They're, they're shouting and jumping and cheering and clapping because they've just enjoyed seeing their little ones on the stage. Wow, it doesn't sound any better than that. For Schools on Dallas, I'm Desmond.